Hello everyone, let's continue with our end-to-end -end example. So in the previous session, we created the table, we created the interface view, we created the consumption view, we also created a metadata extension file. So in this video, uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll continue with the end-to-end -end example, we'll do the business object, we'll define entities for business object, uh, we'll define the behavior definition, and we'll also implement the behavior definitions. So we'll do steps five, six, seven in this video. Uh, but before that, uh, I'd like to talk about what is a business object. Before we go into the steps of defining entities for business object, uh, we need to know what is a business object. Um, so in the uh, context of uh, ABAP RESTful programming language, uh, RAP, uh, business object, uh, it consists of a hierarchical tree of nodes. Uh, and these nodes are linked by composition. Uh, a root entity, uh, the root entity serves as the representation of the business object. Uh, and what we do is in the CDS view, we use the keyword root to identify that this is the root entity. And at this moment, the business object is service agnostic. It doesn't care whether you're trying to create a OData v2 service or a OData v4 service or whether you want UI annotations or not. Uh, so at this moment, the business object is uh, service agnostic. Uh, so if that this doesn't make sense if this definition what I've written doesn't make sense I have an example that will kind of make it very clear for you uh, so a business object uh, we can think of it as a hierarchical uh, tree of nodes uh, so here we have a node we have uh, the house and then there is a room which is uh, uh, houses many rooms so and house can have other uh, nodes as well but here is a simple example where there is only one node now, uh, the next thing that I mentioned was it is linked, these nodes. So right now we have two nodes, a house and a room. And what I say is uh, these nodes are linked by a special kind of association, namely composition. So what composition means is that the rooms cannot exist without the house. Um, so there is no concept of a room if you don't have this uh, house. Uh, so there may be entities that are related to each other but can coexist together so that's not what i mean by composition by composition i clearly state that it cannot exist without the root entity so uh, that is what a business object is it's going to be a, um, a tree of nodes uh, so here we have a tree of nodes just uh, uh, the root node and then there is another child node but it can have multiple nodes um, and the child child nodes cannot exist without the root node. Um, typical example we see is sales order and sales order items. Uh, so sales order is the root entity and then the sales order items are the child entities and the sales order items cannot exist without the root node. Uh, so that's what we mean by the composition. And one of the entity needs to be marked as root. In this case, it is very clear that house is the root entity. Uh, so we want to mark this house as the root entity. Now, by marking this as the root entity, this represents our business object. Uh, so when we talk about business object, we don't talk about room, we talk about house, uh, the main root entity. Uh, the house can have uh, other nodes uh, which are related by composition. In our end-to-end -end case scenario though, uh, we only have a single entity. Uh, so we only have UX team. So we only have, instead of house, we have UX team. Uh, there are no child nodes, that's okay. What we do need to do is we need to add the keyword root in the CDS uh, to represent it as our business object. Uh, so in this case, uh, in this example here, we're going to mark house as the root and that represents the business object. Uh, in our case, we have UX team. We're going to mark that as the root and that will represent the business object. Uh, uh, so if I go into my Eclipse ADT tools, uh, in my previous uh, session, I already marked it as root, uh, but I did mention that I'll come back and visit it later. Uh, so if I go in here in my data definitions, uh, let me refresh my data definitions, uh, and you will see, oh, maybe I'm in the wrong folder. Uh, let me open up the proper folder, the proper package, uh, 5551. And you will see that uh, I did mark this as the root. I marked it as the root view, 
And I also marked uh, the consumption view as the root view as well. So we have already uh, done step six. Uh, so I was going to do step, oh, I mean, step five. So step five is already taken care of when we created the interface view and the consumption view. Uh, we marked these views as root view already. Uh, so we are done with step five. Uh, now let's go to step six. Uh, step six, uh, we are going to look at behavior definitions. Now again, let's have a quick look at what behavior definitions is uh, and for that we'll use the same example uh, we'll kind of uh, expand on this example that we talked about so right now we have a business object called house uh, because house is the root entity and this root entity is going to represent the business object uh, so we have a business object house now the house can have multiple behaviors it can do a lot of stuff so that is what is meant by the behavior whatever it can do uh, you mark that as the behavior of that business object and it is defined in this uh, as an object uh, ABAP repository object. It is defined using a special syntax behavior definition language very simple of course um, and then one root entity equals one behavior definition which means there is a mapping there's a one-to-one -one mapping and all your behaviors of that business object you want to put it in a single file uh, again uh, let me give a solid example uh, that will kind of illustrate what I'm trying to say uh, so we know we have a business object called house because it is marked as the root and this house uh, can have many behaviors uh, so you can build a house uh, which uh, kind of in our uh, in programming model that uh, that is the create operation uh, you can remodel the house uh, that would be the update uh, you can destroy delete uh, so these are all uh, CUD operations create update and delete uh, on this uh, uh, business object and uh, we'll talk about how to implement this but this comes for free uh, with the manage scenario so we really don't have to worry about uh, the building remodeling destroy all we have to do is in the definition file we just have to mark that it has all these operations um, now there may be times uh, when you may want to take a certain action uh, based on a different action so if something happens uh, then that will trigger another action and that is called determination um, so here if the plumbing if you have a plumbing problem in the house uh, then you want to call the repairman. Uh, so plumbing could be a property in the house and if that gets messed up or if the value goes to critical or something, then you would want to call a repairman. Uh, it doesn't fall under this create update delete operations because this happens if a field or if a property changes, right? Uh, so that is determination. Uh, now you can buy, sell the house and so on. So again, this doesn't fall under the realm of create, update, or delete. Uh, so these are actions that can happen outside of this uh, realm. And here you can, it's marked as an action. Now action uh, in the OData world uh, is represented as function imports. Uh, so you can do these things as well. And also you can do some validation. Uh, so you, like certain fields can have certain values. Uh, so you can do all of that. Now what we want to do is all of the behaviors that this business object has, you just want to list them all one by one in a definition file. And there is a one-to-one -one mapping. So if you have one business object, it will only have one definition file. And this definition file will have all the behaviors associated with this business object. So you want to put everything in here. Now you may ask, hey, you know what? I have this business object, but it has some child uh, notes as well. Uh, what about the actions and the behavior of the child note? Yes, go ahead and put all of that in the same behavior definition file. So if the room has a certain action, like uh, remodeling the room and so on or adding additional rooms go ahead and list them all in the same definition file but the key here thing to uh, recommend uh, to understand is there is a strict one-to-one -one mapping so one object business object one file and this will have all of the uh, behaviors whether you implement it or not so uh, whether you destroy the house or not you still just list it here it is recommended to list it here whether you want whether you actually use it or not. Okay, so um, 
And here, uh, once we have the behavior definition, so we've created this file, this behavior definition file, and we have listed a, a whole bunch of uh, behaviors that uh, uh, that is associated with this business object. Now we want to implement all these things in code. Now the create, update, and delete, like I said, is automatically implemented. All you have to do is just list it in that behavior definition file. And this comes for free, so we don't have to do anything after this. But for the other ones, for the determination, the action, the validation, here you have to write custom code. And uh, you have to write custom code because the app doesn't know what to do when a certain value changes. It doesn't know that you have to call the plumb, like the repairman and so on. Uh, so here you have to write custom code because this is actually custom business logic. Okay, so having said that, um, let us go back to our example. So here we have done uh, uh, step five. Now let's uh, look at uh, step six and step seven. Uh, and step six, what we are going to do is we are going to list create, update, delete operation for our business object. And we're just going to list them. And also what we are going to do is during the creation, so if when I'm creating a team member, I'm going to do a validation. And I'm going to check if the age is greater than 21. And then what I want to do is I want to have an action. Uh, so the user, when the user starts, when we create a user, uh, the active flag is not set for that user. Uh, but then after a series of checks are complete, we can call we, we can call set active. Then we do a series of checks whether the background check is complete, uh, whether the user is onboarded, and then we mark that user as active. And what we also do is uh, determination. Uh, so when the role, so the user say, let's say he has a UX developer role. Uh, if he, if the role is changed, then we also change the salary of that user. So that is determination. Uh, and the salary itself, if we are going to mark it as read only, so you cannot directly uh, change the salary. Uh, but if you change the role, the salary is automatically changed uh, based on business logic. Uh, so let's start with the defining the behavior definitions. And like I said, we just list all the behavior definitions and the language that we use is a BDL, behavior definition language. Pretty straightforward, we just list uh, that I want to do create and so on. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I did mention uh, that the behavior definition language, uh, there is a strict one-to-one -one mapping. So I'll start with the interface view. And if I right click on this interface view, uh, you will see that there is a new behavior definition. And I click on this uh, new behavior definition. And notice that it doesn't give you an option to change the name uh, because uh, it takes the name by default. There's a strict one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, so I say next and I say finish. So this will give me the template for this behavior definition. Now what I'm going to do is I have, uh, and you can see that it's already listed create, update, and delete. So those are already listed. Uh, but we have, uh, if you look into our example here, uh, we have validation. So we want to add this line. We want to add the actions. We want to add determination. We want to mark salary as read only and so on. So I have a code snippet and I will go ahead and copy this code snippet. Uh, and I'll kind of uh, go through what we have done here. Okay, so let's start. Um, so the very first line is managed, uh, which means that this is going to be taken care of by the framework. Um, now, um, so you can have unmanaged if you have uh, existing uh, code that you want to port over from ABAP. Uh, but here in this session, we are only going to be talking about managed. Uh, so we'll come to this later, the draft. I've commented that out. Uh, let me change this to 5551. Uh, so this is the defined behavior. It comes as part of the template itself. Um, and I will change this to 5551, 5551. Okay. Um, and I'll change this to 5551 for now. And this also 5551 for now. I will save it. Now let me go ahead and explain what I have done so far. Uh, so this comes as part of the um, 
the template uh, the implementation so right now we have listed all the behaviors and like I said the behavior definition is just a listing of all the behaviors uh, but we are also going to say that hey you know create update and delete like I said comes for free so we don't have to worry about it uh, but then the other ones the action the set active the determination the change salary and so on we have to write custom code so what I'm going to say is hey the implementation is going to be found in this file. Uh, we'll come to the behavior implementation in the next step. So that is the next step. Um, now the persistent table uh, is going to be, this is the table that uh, that is part of this uh, interface view. So this again comes from the template. Uh, I didn't have to do anything. Uh, and then we'll talk about this uh, draft table later on. Uh, for now, uh, it's commented out, so that's fine. Um, lock master, it needs to be marked as lock master. And here we start with the listing of all the behaviors of this business object. Uh, so we are going to do a create, update, and delete. Uh, so that I have listed it right here. Uh, now here, we'll start with the field numbering. Now, if I go to this table, uh, this paste table itself, uh, it has a ID field. Now, this ID field, I had mentioned that it is going to be, the numbers are going to be generated uh, by the system. We don't want the user to be inputting a 16 uh, UUID character, so we don't want that to happen. Uh, we don't want that. It, it uh, We could but uh, we don't want it. We want the system to take care of that. So what I'm saying is this numbering of this primary key is going to be managed. That means the framework, you do it. Uh, and it's read-only, so the user cannot enter this ID or cannot update this ID as well. Uh, so this line is basically telling, hey, system, you take care of the ID. Uh, now, we've also marked certain fields as read-only. Like I said, the salary, uh, the user cannot change it. Uh, you can change the row of the user, and that will automatically calculate what the salary is for that row. But um, direct access to changing the salary is not allowed. Uh, same thing with active. We don't want to uh, manually update it with active flag. Uh, we are going to call this action, and that action will do a series of checks and then mark this uh, user as active. Okay, so this two, and then these two are system fields. I'm just going to leave it as read-only. So the very first one is the action. So I'm taking like uh, an example of action, determination, and validation. Um, so the action, uh, we want to call this we want to create a custom method called set active and set active will have some checks and then once all the checks are passed then we will change the field active to true now what we want to do is uh, once the active flag is set to true uh, we don't want to call set active again because the user is already active. Uh, so for that, we are going to do this result one dot self. So this action is going to work on this uh, this instance, and there is also a method where we can check if the user is active, and if he is active, uh, we can disable the set active. Uh, so we'll go through this uh, thing. Uh, so here we are kind of uh, talking about action. We're also talking about feature control as well. Uh, now determination. And now this, like I said, if the role is changed, uh, then we want to change the salary. Uh, now, so salary is the method that is going to get called when this field role is changed. Now here is uh, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, there is on save. Uh, that's what I'm. Uh, uh, th that's what I'm targeting. But there is also another thing called on modify. Now you may ask uh, what is the difference between on save and on modify. Now on save gets triggered after the field, the role field is changed. So after it is changed. Now if you used on modify, uh, this method gets run before the role is changed. Uh, so make a note of that. So if you want to do something before a certain, before the field is changed, then you want to use on modify. And if you want to do the action after it is saved, then you want to use on save. Uh, validate age, uh, so we have a validation as well. Uh, so here, uh, 
I'm targeting this field age and when I do a create uh, I and again I'm using on save so before I uh, after it's uh, saved uh, so um, I want to run this validate age and check if uh, the user is above 21 um, so all is good here so we have listed it all and even if we don't want to expose certain things like say if we don't want to expose delete uh, the recommended approaches to go ahead and put these things in here so you still want to go ahead and add all these entries in here uh, even if you're not going to be using it okay um, now the last thing is this mapping uh, now this mapping is important uh, so what we you want to do is you want to map these fields from the base table so this is the base table uh, to the um, in the, to the views, uh, to the view um, uh, column names. Now, the reason we want to do this um, is uh, because we are using create, update, and delete, and the system is taking care of it. But the system really needs to know, hey, where my base table is and how, what field maps to what field. Um, so, because we are managing it with this uh, system managed, we are using managed, and we are using this CRUD operation, we need to mention how these fields are mapped. So, go ahead and map these fields as well. Okay, so now it looks good to me. So, I can go ahead and save it, and let me also go ahead and activate it. Uh, so at this moment, activation is complete. Uh, there were some warnings, and that's because we haven't actually implemented the behavior definition. So we have listed all the behaviors in step six. Um, so let's go ahead and implement these behavior definitions in the next video. Thanks.